فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Our companions, those who attribute themselves to the Shafi'i school of thought, have stated that there is nothing wrong with menstruating women and those in a state of major ritual impurity, saying, O oh, Yahya, hold on to the book. Provided that they did not need to recite the Quran, it is also acceptable to say, To Allah we belong and to Him is our return, in the event that they are befallen by a calamity as long as they do not intend the recitation of the Quran. So, what now he talks about an issue called if a person reads verses of the Quran not with the intention that it's Quran. So he comes and he says, Khudil kitaba bi quwa. Ya Yahya. He's talking to a guy called Yahya. Yahya, Khudil kitaba bi quwa. Take the book with strength. He give, he's, he's giving him a book. But it doesn't mean the Quran. That's it. It's permissible, they say. A person, they lose a loved one. And they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Inna lillahi inna lillahi wa ilayhi raji'oon. Isn't that? It's, an, it's, an, it's part of an ayah, right? Yeah? So he does it. He does that. And he's not reading it because it's Quran. He's not intending it for qira'at al-Quran. Then they say, the Shafi'iyah, they say it's permissible. Qala ashabuna. Ashabuna here doesn't mean the companions of the Prophet. When he says, Qala ashabuna, what does he mean? Ashabuna means our, our followers. Yeah? We Shafi'iyah believe he means. Yeah? Our companions of Khurasan have stated that it is also permissible to say, Glory be to him who has made this subservient to us, and we could not possibly have done that of our own accord upon mounting a camel or any other beast of burden. Now, du'as, for example, when you go into the, uh, your car and you're in a state of jalab or sister's in a state that she's in hayl, she can she say the can she make dua? Subhanallahi sakhara lana hada wa ba kunna lahum mukhrinin wa inna ila rabbina la munqalibun. Yeah? Is she allowed to make it? He said yes. Ashabun al Khurasaniyun, they said that you can. Naam. And when one supplicates, he may say, O oh Allah, bring us good in this world and good in the hereafter. All of these are verses from the Quran, but he's saying it ala wajhin in a way that's not intended to be the Quran. So he can also make this dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasil wa fi la akharat hasil wa qila adhab al-nar, he can say that. Naam. The Imam of al Hurmain also stated that if the individual who is impure, i.e. major with impurity, says, in the name of Allah and all praise is due to Allah, with the intention of reciting, then he has committed a sin. But if he simply said it for the sake of mentioning his Lord, or had no real intention at all, it is not considered sinful. No. It is also permissible for someone upon major impurity to recite that which has been abrogated from the Quran, such as, if an elderly or married man or elderly woman commit adultery, then stone them to death. This is now a very, uh, uh, this used to be a verse in the Quran. This ayah, yeah, it is a shaykh wa shaykhatu idha zanaya farjumuhum al battata nakana min Allah. Wallahu azizun hakim, I think that's what the ayah was. It used to be an ayah that was read, but it got abrogated in its wording. Its meaning is in the Quran though. The meaning still stands in the, in, sah? The meaning, it still stands. I mean, we have to still follow the meaning. The point is, um, this ayah is abrogated. It's no longer in the Quran. Is a person allowed to read it according to Imam al-Haramin? You can still read it, no problem. It's an abrogated verse. So they are, they are allowed to read it, even if they're in a state of Major impurity. That's what he he mentions. Fasrun fi tayammum li qiraat al Quran. Ida lam yajid al junub aw al haid ma an tayammam wa yubah lahu al qiraat wa al salat wa ghairuhuma. Fa in ahdath hurimat عليه الصلاة ولم ولم تحرم عليه القراءة والجلوس في المسجد وغيرهما مما مما لا يحرم مما مما لا يحرم على المحدث 
كما إذا اغتسل ثم أحدث وهذا مما يسأل عنه ويستغرب فيقال جنوب يمنع من الصلاة ولا يمنع من قراءة القرآن والجلوس في المسجد من غير ضرورة كيف صورته فهذه صورته ثم لا فرق في ما ذكرنا بين التيمم الجلوب في الحضر والسفر وذكر بعض أصحاب الشافعي أنه إذا تيمم في الحضر استباح الصلاة ولا يقرأ ولا يقرأ بعدها ولا يجلس في المسجد والصحيح جواز ذلك كما قدمنا ولو تيمم وصلى وقرأ ثم رأى ما أن يلزمه استعماله فإنه يحرم عليه القراءة فإنه يحرم عليه القراءة وجميع ما يحرم على الجنوب حتى يغتسل ولو تيمم وصلى وقرأ ثم أراد التيمم ثم أراد التيمم لحدث أو لفريضة أخرى أو لغير ذلك فإنه لا يحرم عليه القراءة على مذهب الصحيح على المذهب الصحيح المختار وفيه وجه لبعض أصحاب الشافعي أنه لا يجوز والمعروف الأول أما إذا لم يجد الجنوب ماء ولا ترابا فإنه يصلي لحرمة الوقت على حسب حاله ويحرم عليه القراءة خارج الصلاة ويحرم عليه أن يقرأ في الصلاة ما زاد على الفاتحة وهل يحرم عليه قراءة الفاتحة فيه وجهان الصحيح المختار أنه لا يحرم بل يجب فإن الصلاة لا تصح إلا بها وكما جازت الصلاة للضرورة مع الجنابة تجوز القراءة والثاني لا يجوز بل يأتي بالأذكار التي بها بل يأتي بالأذكار التي يأتي بها العاجز الذي لا يحفظ شيئا من القرآن لأن هذا عاجز شرعا فصار كالعاجز حسا والصواب الأول وهذه الفروع التي ذكرتها يحتاج إليها فلهذا أشرت إليها بأوجز العبارات وإلا فلها أدلة وتتمات كثيرة معروفة في كتب الفقه والله تعالى أعلم Section, Tayyumum and recitation of the Qur'an. The author here, he talks about a tayammum. Tayammum is when you can't find water anymore. You use the dust to recite the Qur'an. Naam. Individuals in a state of major ritual impurity and women who have just completed their menstruation should perform tayammum if they are unable to find water. So if the person can't find water, and he's in a state of janaba, or in a woman's in a state of hayl, she then and she can't find water. Tayammama, they use they do tayammum. Yeah. Having done this, it will be permissible for them to pray, recite, and perform other acts of worship. <coughs> if they should then nullify their purity by doing any of the things that nullifies the law, it will not be permissible for them to pray, but it is still permissible for them to recite the Quran sit in the masjid and Until he makes ghusl. 
If one performs Tayyamun, prays, recites, and then seeks to perform Tayyamun again due to, the, due to the nullification of his first Tayyamun, or for the purpose of praying the next obligatory prayer, or for any other reason, it is still permissible for him to recite the Qur'an between the two Tayyamuns, according to the more correct of the scholarly views. Some of Imam Shafi'i's companions were of the opinion that this is not permissible, but the view that it is permissible is more correct. An individual in a state of major ritual impurity who can find neither water nor sand must pray regardless of his state if he sees that the time of the obligatory prayer will expire. However, it is not permissible for him to recite the Qur'an after praying or recite any chapter of the Qur'an in addition to Al-Fatiha in his prayer. But is it forbidden for such an individual to recite even Al-Fatiha? The first of two opinions on this is the first of two opinions on this issue is that it is not forbidden and that rather it is obligatory. But just as it is permissible for such an individual to pray in a state of impurity owing to the dire necessity, it is likewise permissible for him to recite al fatiha for the same reason. The second opinion is that it is not permissible, and that he should limit himself to saying that which is prescribed for one who has not or is unable to memorize anything of the Quran. The reason being that he who is unable to do that which is required, in this case purify himself for prayer, due to a legitimate legislative reason is the same as he who is unable to do what is required due to a physical or mental handicap. The first of the two opinions, however, is the correct one. They use the word handicap? Yeah, physical or mental handicap. The first of the two opinions, however, is the correct one. It is necessary that such rulings be known and understood. And this is why I have briefly made reference to them. There is, however, much more to be read with regards to these rulings in the books, in the books of jurisprudence, and Allah knows best. فصل في أماكن قراءة القرآن ويستحب أن تكون القراءة في مكان نظيف مختار ولهذا استحب جماعة من العلماء القراءة في المسجد. لكونه جامعا للنظافة وشرف البقعة ومحصلا لفضيلة الأخرى وهي الاعتكاف فإنه ينبغي لكل جالس في المسجد أن ينوي الاعتكاف سواء كثر جلوسه أو قل بل ينبغي أول دخوله في المسجد أن ينوي الاعتكاف وهذا الأدب ينبغي أن يعتنى به ويشاع ذكره ويعرف الصغار ويعرفه الصغار والعوام فإنه مما يغفل عنه وأما القراءة في الحمام فقد اختلف السلف في كراهتها فقال أصحابنا لا تكره ونقله الإمام المجمع على جلالة أبو بكر بن المنذر في الإشراف عن إبراهيم النخعي ومالك وهو قول عطاء وذهب إلى كراهته جماعات من علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه رواه ابن أبي رواه عنه ابن أبي داود وحكاه ابن المنذر عن جماعة من التابعين منهم أبو وائل شقيق اسمه منهم أبو وائل شقيق بن سلمة والشعبي والحسن البصري ومكحول وقبيصة بن ذؤيب وروينا أيضا عن إبراهيم النخعي وحكاه أصحابنا عن أبي حنيفة رضي الله عنهم نجمعين قال الشعبي تكره قراءة رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين قال الشعبي تكره قراءة القرآن في ثلاث مواضع الحمامات والحشو والحشوش وبيت الرحى وهي تدور وعن أبي ميسرة قال لا يذكر الله تعالى إلا في مكان طيب والله أعلم وأما القراءة في الطريق فالمختار فالمختار أنها جائزة غير مكروهة إذا لم إذا لم يته إذا لم يلته صاحبها فإن التهى عنها كرهت كما كره النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم القراءة للناعس مخافة من الغلط وروى ابن أبي داود عن أبي درداء رضي الله عنه أنه كان يقرأ في الطريق وعن عمر بن عبد العزيز رحمه الله تعالى عنه أنه أذن فيها قال ابن أبي داود وحدثني أبو الربيع قال أخبرنا ابن وهب قال سألت مالكا عن الرجل يصلي من آخر الليل فيخرج إلى المسجد وقد بقي من الصورة التي كان يقرأ فيها شيء فقال ما أعلم القراءة قراءة تكون في الطريق وكره ذلك وهذا إسناد صحيح عن مالك رضي الله عنه 
section, the place of recitation of the Quran. The author now is going to talk about where to read the Quran. It is recommended that the recitation take place in a clean, appropriate area. So a person reads the Quran in a very cleansed, appropriate place. Now, this is why many scholars prefer recitation in the mosque. So it's one of the best places for them, and the scholars have given the first priority is that the recitation is done inside the masjid. As it is a place that is both clean and respectable. So the masjid has two things. The reason why it takes is because it combines between it is clean and it's an honorable place in the eyes of Allah. Your house might be clean, but it may not necessarily be the most honorable place to Allah. But the masjid is. Now. In addition to these features, the extra reward for making it itikaf, i.e. confining oneself to a masjid for the purpose of worship, is also attainable in a mosque. Third reason why it's better to do it in a mosque is that whilst you're sitting in a masjid, you get the reward of a mu'atakif, a person who's doing itikaf. And itikaf means a person who is staying in one place, not moving from it. Naam. Indeed, anyone coming to sit in the mosque should intend to make it to whether he intends to stay for a long or short period of time. The fuqaha differ regarding the amount in which a person can say, I did it for. Is the minimum a day and a night? Or is it just one prayer? Or is it just a split second? How long can a person say, I've, be, I've done it Scholars differ on that. As a matter of fact, he should intend to make it to Delph as soon as he sets foot into the masjid. Mm -hmm. It is important that we give this matter its due importance by spreading this practice and making it known to all people and to our children. Sikh Rahimullah says, This manners and this etiquette is a thing that we all should know about, which is reading the Quran in the masjid. Are coming here, sitting in the masjid and reading the Quran. Not only should we just spread it, but we should teach our young kids. We should teach the general mass this practice. Because a lot of people are heedless about it. Yeah. For it is something that has become neglected and forgotten. Our predecessors hold different opinions, however, regarding the permissibility of reciting in bathing and washing places. Hammam is this place is where you see it's called um, Turkish Hammam. Uh, so also, the Syrians they have it as well. And it's basically like it's a sauna. To be honest, it's hot room, steam room. It's like a steam room sauna. People go in there and they sit there and they just sit there. So, so it's called a Hammam. Um, are you allowed to read Quran there while you're in there? This is what it is, hey? Our companions have stated that it is not disliked and Imam Abu Bakr ibn al Mundir, whose eminence is known to all, mentioned in his book Ishraf that this was the opinion of Ibrahim al Nakhari, Malik, and, and Abar. This statement, this reciting in the Hammam, the Salaf, they differed amongst themselves, and whether it's makruh, a dislike or not. But our Ashab, meaning Shafi'iyya, they said that it's not disliked. And an Imam Abu Bakr ibn al-Mudr, and now we praise him here now. So you can, if anybody asks you who's Abu Bakr ibn al-Mudr, you can always say, now what we said about him, al-Imam al-Mujma' ala jalalatihi. This is a tazkiyah from Nawawi to him, which is he calls him al-Imam al-Mujma'. He's an Imam whose imamah is unanimously agreed upon. No one is differing about it. Abu Bakr ibn al mundir he has a book called Al-Ishraf. This book is published, and it is done with the tahqiq of Sheikh Mashur. Sheikh Mashur Hassan al-Salman, hafizahullah ta'ala, he done tahqiq of the kitab. And he done it very good, mashallah. So he transmitted from Ibrahim al nakhai and Malik, and it's this view of Ata. And it is the view of who? Ata, that it is what? That is not disliked. Others are of the opinion that it is disliked. And among those holy. This is the second view now 
of scholars who are of the opinion that it's disliked for a person to read the Quran whilst they're in the Surah. And among those holding this opinion is Ali ibn Abi Talib, as was narrated by Ibn Abi Dawood. Ibn al-Mundir also reported the opinion that it is disliked from a group among the Tabi'in. So Ali ibn Abi Talib of the companions disliked it, as Ibn Abi Dawood mentions. Ibn al-Mundir also mentions a group of Tabi'in now, not Sahabas, but Tabi'in. And from those who are uh, Tabi'in are as follows. Among them were Abu Wa'il, the brother of Ibn Salama, Al-Sha'bi, Al-Hassan al-Basri, Makhul, and Qabisa ibn Dudir. Qabisa ibn Dhu'ibn Qabisa ibn Dhu'ibn This is also narrated that Ibrahim and Nakhari held this opinion in contrast to his other opinion on the matter and our companions have mentioned that Abu Hanifa held the same view May Allah have mercy on them all Sah As Sha'bi states that it is disliked that the Quran be recited in three places bathing places, toilets and at the place of a grinding mill where it is being operated so three places Sha'bi didn't like. The first one was Hammamat. The Hammam is basically steam room sauna, basically. The second one is Al Hushushi. Hushushi is a toilet. It's a place where the person does their call of nature. The third one was Wabaytur Raha. Wabaytur Raha is basically the, the place where it's a factory where basically things are being made and this is all types of factories cotton has been made uh, but this one basically is it, what's being made is back in those days they used to have camels they would put the thing in the grinding in the middle and then it would go around in circles and grind everything now we have machines that do that but all of that they didn't like it when there was what whilst everything was functioning, whilst things were happening. The reason is because the voice is loud and the Qur'an would be low in volume compared to that. Note, it is important to mention that at the time of Imam al nawi people would wash or take baths in one location and relieve themselves in another, unlike today where bathrooms are used for both. This is particularly important as the ruling with regards to reciting the Qur'an mentioned above refers to reciting it in a bathing place and not in a place where people relieve themselves as the latter is generally prohibited and not just disliked. Uh, that person's ta'liq, is, 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 that's the editor's translation. Obviously. We don't, we don't want his, his understanding. So, so. Hold on. Abu Maysara states, Allah should only be mentioned in clean places and Allah knows best. No. As for reciting why on the Abu Maysara, he says that لا يذكر الله تعالى الله should not be mentioned in except in good places. نعم. As for reciting while on the road, the correct opinion is that this is permissible as long as the reciter is not distracted. So here, what about while I'm driving? I'm on my riding beast. I'm walking to somewhere. Am I allowed to read the Quran? The author here, رحمه الله, he says. فالمختار, the opinion that is chosen is أنها جائزة, that is permissible. غير مكروها, and that is not disliked. But like in what? إذا لم يلتهي, يلتهي means it doesn't get distracted. يلتهي means distraction. صاحبها فإن التهى عنها, if he becomes distracted by it, كريهت, is then disliked for him. If, however, he finds that he is distracted, then it is disliked. As the Prophet ﷺ disliked that one who is sleepy or dreary recites for fear that he may err in his recitation. That's now the issue of reciting the Qur'an whilst on the street if the person is distracted. This is disliked. Just like is disliked for the one who is na'is. Na'is is the one who is drowsy and he's heading to sleep and you know he's falling asleep. It's not like for him makhafat min al gharat. He might say something bad. He might say kufr. Sah? He might say states of statements of what? He might say statements of kufr. So that individual is disliked for him to read the Quran. When the Prophet ﷺ, the Hadith is Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, that Aisha radiallahu anha narrated, 
إِذَا نَعَسَ أَحَدُكُمْ فِي الصَّلَاةِ If one of you in the prayer feels and he wakes up فَلْيَرْقَدْ حَتَّى يَدْهَبْ عَنْهُ النُّونَ Sit down huh? until your sleep goes فَإِنَا أَحَدَكُمْ إِذَا صَلَّى وَهُوَ نَاعِسْ As if one of you prays whilst he's sleepy لَعَلَّوْ يَدْهَبْ يَسْتَغْفِرْ فَيَسُبَ نَفْسَهُ He may think that he's asking for forgiveness but he may be insulting himself, basically. Ibn Abi Dawood narrated that Abu, that Abu Abdullah used to recite on the road and it's also narrated that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz also committed it. So here the author, Rahimullah, is trying to show that it's anha jaiza, that it's permissible to read the Quran on the road. So he says, it is narrated from who Ibn Abi, uh, Ibn Abi Dawood that he used to read, Abu Darda used to read on the road whilst he was walking, his noble companion. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz also permitted it, he allowed it. Now. Ibn Abi Dawood also reported that Ibn Wahbin asked Malik regarding he who prays in the last part of the night and then walks to the masjid without having completed what he had intended to recite, i.e., whether or not it is permissible for such a person to recite what remains of his portion while walking to the masjid. He, Yani Malik, said, I haven't heard that, that it is permissible for one to recite while on the road, indicating that he disliked the action. This is authentically narrated from Malik, may Allah have mercy on him. So now the, the issue of reading in the path, and Imam Malik was asked, Ibn Wahab been asked. So somebody was praying the salah at night, and there was surah left. There's a surah he didn't finish off. So what he did was, he walked outside, to finish off, he was walking on the road, just to finish off the surah that was remaining for him. Uh, can he do this? And Imam Malik was asked. And then Imam Malik said, Ma alamu al takun fi tariq. I don't know a recitation that should take place on the street. Meaning he was trying to say, that shouldn't be done. So he didn't like it, Imam Malik, rahimahullah. And as Nawi said, this is authentically transmitted from him. Faslun fi istiqbal al-qiblati wa kayfiyat al-julus li qiraat al-Qur'an yustahab li qari'i fi ghayr al-salati an yastaqbil al-qibla faqad jaa fi al-hadith khayr al-majalis ma istuqbil bihi al-qibla wa yajlis mutakhashi'an bi sakinatin wa waqar mutriqa mutriqan ra'sahu wa yakun julusuhu wahdahu fi tahsin adabihi wa khudu'ihi وخضوعه كجلوس بين يدي معلمه فهذا هو الأكمل ولو قرأ قائما أو, مضج أو مضطجعا أو في فراشه أو غير ذلك من الأحوال جاز وله أجر ولكن دون الأول قال الله عز وجل إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم وثبت في الصحيح عن عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يتكئ في حجري في حجري both ways you can say it. وأنا حائض فيقرأ القرآن رواه البخاري ومسلم وفي رواية يقرأ القرآن ورأسه في حجري في حجري وعن أبي موسى الأشعري رضي الله عنه قال إني أقرأ القرآن في صلاتي وأقرأ على فراشي وعن عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت إني لا أقرأ حزبي وأنا مضجعة على السرير